All right, this is my Assassin's Creed review. There will be some spoilers, slightly. I don't want to give away too much, but I will be talking about some things so I can give a more thorough review. First of all, I'm a fan of the video game series and not just a fan. I am a hardcore fan because I love this video game series. The franchise is great. It's one of my favorite franchises or game series ever. I mean, it's definitely in my top five. And that's saying a lot because there's a lot of games out there and I've been gaming since the late 80s. But the thing is, going into this movie, there's some stuff that I like. This is a setup movie. People are being introduced to this for the first time, so there's a lot that you have to get across first. And a lot of it, for fans of the video game, you didn't need to hear. Or you're like, okay, yeah, I know that. Get to the story. Let me see what's going on with Colin Lynch, who Michael Fassbender is playing. Let me know what Alan Reichen is doing here, who is Jeremy Irons' character. Marion Cotillard is Jeremy Irons' daughter in this movie. So she's a scientist, and she's the one that's handling the patients who she's putting into the animus, especially Colin Lynch. Um, uh, so, like... I'm, I'm a fan of the game. I know a lot of this. I expect it a lot. Uh, if the movie was slow at some points, it was okay with me because I know that other people have to catch up. Um, and I was always waiting for certain things. And there's a lot of lore and there's a lot of material in these games. A lot. But first off, I have to say, being a fan of the video game, I might be a little biased. But I thought this movie was okay. It was okay. It wasn't terrible. I've seen worse movies. Trust me. This is no Independence Day uh resurgent or whatever it was called you know i can't even remember the name but this is a okay movie i've seen worse movies i saw worse movies if i had to give it one uh, between one and ten i would say seven so a 7.5 at the highest because there was a lot of room for improvement i'm an inspired screenwriter myself so i see a lot of things that i would have done different especially with the script when it comes to being a video game adaption that word there adaption that means adapting from video game to movie how well they do this and I think this is very faithful to the video game. So I say it's one of the best adaptions. You got to realize a lot of things have been adapted from television to movies or books to movies, cartoons to movies and video games to movies. I think this is one of the best video game adaptions because it really stayed faithful to the game. Now, it didn't do everything right. Once I saw who the script writers was on this, I was like, OK, it does feel like that. If you ever seen Divergent, it has a lot of that feel. The three Divergent movies... I'd say Assassin's Creed kind of felt like this. You know, the, the whole first two thirds of the movie, or I have to say more than that. The last 10 minutes of it was exactly what I wanted to see. And, and I mean, I wanted to see also some other set of things, especially since they were introducing somebody who was new to everything that's happening. Colin Lynch, Michael Fassman, the character. But this movie wasn't the worst. It wasn't the best. I can see why some people had problems with this movie. But I, I, I wouldn't sit there and say, don't go see this movie. Go see it. You might like it. It has a, a very strange feel. Like I said, it's like somebody's trapped in prison or an insane asylum. So it has that feel to it. If you don't like movies like that, you could get bored with the beginning of this movie or the first two thirds of it. But everything happening in the past when he's reliving the memories was fantastic. Visually stunning also. Action sequences were great. Now, one of the biggest uh, letdowns of this was the performances. Now, they, I think they were as good as they were supposed to be interpreted. Now, Ubisoft was behind this movie also. So, I'm like, Ubisoft should have had a lot of information to give them on how people should have acted or been. Now, I say this because most of the people in this movie, especially at Astergo Industries, Astergo is the company ran by Alan Reichen. And he is also a character that was... In the first game, he was mentioned a lot. You get to hear his voice, not really see his face too much. And he runs Abstergo. And uh, the people working Abstergo in the movie are very bland. And I like I think that comes across as them just being cold, cold-hearted, or just cold people, period. Because their idea is to take free will away from people. We have to start controlling people. There's an artifact we're looking for called the Apple of Eden, and it can control people. And if you want to do something like that, think about that. That's very robotic. Or a machine like, you know, most movies and stories where machines become self-aware, robots become self-aware. They say we have to control everything because humans are the biggest threat to this world. And that's kind of how they are thinking. They're like, we got to take free will away from these people. Everybody on Earth, because people cause so, too much violence. There's been wars. There's too much division between people, whether it be religion, political beliefs. We have to control people. And um, if they are cold, that cold that they want to do that, take free will away from people, I can see them acting like this. But that might not work with certain people. They might want to see more flair in a person. Now, there's a character named Vidic in the first Assassin's Creed game, in the first couple of games, and he worked at Abstergo. 
he was a hit of the Animus Project. He showed more flair and more emotion in his you know delivery of what he was trying to do. Now, in the game, there's Desmond Miles who gets introduced. I mean, he comes in this the, almost the same way that Colin Lynch does in this movie, who Michael Fassbender plays. And it's just like, what the hell is going on? And they're very straightforward. Hey, look, we need information from you. We have technology that can, you know, relive your ancestors' memories. And we need to search those memories to find secrets that are hidden, that we're looking for. So get in, shut up, and let us work. Be cooperative. We'll let you go. If not... Is going to be bad for you, especially when we take the long route to get this information from you. So, I mean, that's that's pretty much the setup, you know, at the beginning. And you're thrown into this, the audience or new players to the game, into this movie in the game that way. You know, it's just very like, okay, you'll learn more as the movie goes on. You'll learn more as the game goes on. It's very much the same type of pace. But the thing here, like I said, the performance is Marion Cotillard. She showed some passion at moments. She was a scientist and she was ahead of the Animus Project. So she didn't want, you know, anybody to get hurt. She wanted to take care of the people the best way possible. She wanted to take her time. She had a goal to reach, but she wanted to do it the right way without putting somebody's, you know, mind in jeopardy. You know, damaging their mind because this machine plays with your mind. Um, but her dad is like, just do it. You know what I mean? Just like that. Just do it. Hurry up. Now, there's characters in a video game that was like, we have to hurry up. If we don't get it now, we're wasting time. They showed more flair, and that wasn't happening in this movie. So I can see the people saying, oh, the performances weren't top-notch. This is definitely no performance in this is going to get nominated for awards. Really, off of that, it's, it's not happening. There's a lot of lore in this, a lot of weapons with the assassins, a lot of, uh, you know, just information, um, some a lot of little references to the game and that was cool but there's a lot more to go in the game there's so much information you walk past a church you press a button it brings up this page of information just about the church and these are historical um settings and buildings that really exist in the real world that they put into this game now they mix a lot of fictional stuff with real you know world history in the games and it kind of put a twist on things like it's always a secret with something and everything the assassins who are supposedly the good guys in the game but with you know a, a twist because some of them don't think they're necessarily completely good guys and the templars where some people think you know they their their idea is right their way of doing it is wrong trying to control people um they're very much the bad guys or the worst of the two in the game and the same is for this movie Abstergo Industries was started by the Templars and they hunt out assassins to get their members because assassins were protectors of these artifacts that they're looking for like the Apple of Eden. So that's the whole thing. We got to find these assassins because they used to guard these artifacts and they always wanted to stop us from reaching our goals for thousands of years. The other part of this movie takes place in 1492 in Spain during the Spanish Inquisition and those parts are mainly action parts and they're fantastic. It's what you expect in the game when you play the game part as the assassins. You know, there's a lot of parkour, there's a lot of action, you know, uh, combat, hand-to-hand -hand weapons like staffs, swords. Um, and there's a mythology. We are protectors of the people's free will. And the Templars are the bad guys and they want to take it away. So it's it's the, that's the beautiful parts. It's the very the real beautiful parts. And the animus in this is different. You know, this animus has an arm and allows the person to move around and the game uh you pretty much laid back in a chair later on they changed that it was just a headset and anybody can relive anybody's memories as long as you have some of their dna but in this movie they allowed the person to take on the memories of their ancestors and learn their abilities they become adept to the things that happen the fighting the climbing the running the escaping and stuff like that so the animus in here works better for the movie because in the game, you're interactive, you're doing everything. The movie, you're watching, so you get to see the main character also, instead of just laying there still and stiff, he relives, he mimes everything and mimics everything that's going on in his mind when he's seeing his ancestors' memories. I, I have to compare this to The Matrix. I mean, when anytime you're plugging somebody into a machine and they're relieving memories that's not their own or even uh, a fake reality, virtual reality world, you have to compare this to Matrix. It's almost the same thing. Now, when they're in the present day, and I blame this on being at a Industries, it's almost like they're stuck in an insane asylum. 
everything seems very like just cold and, and dull and people are there to work we want to you know we're not here to build relationships now in this movie they had a bunch of assassins in this in the game you just really focused on you saw just one at a time but later on in the movie they do break out and it happens at a point in time where they realize okay the guy Colin Lynch is going to lead them to this apple and we have to stop them. Now, Colin has some issues. He saw his mother dead at the hand of his dad at a very young age. That's how the movie starts off. So he has some issues. He grows up. He, he killed a pimp, supposedly, and he was condemned to lethal injection in Texas. I guess the laws down there are serious, probably, and I guess that makes sense. <laughs> so he was supposed to die. Now, Abstergo uh, kept him from dying made it appear that he did so they can do whatever they want to him. I don't think he believed he was going to be let go. But being inside there, interacting with the other people who are also being held hostage, he's like, what the hell is going on? These people are crazy. What are they talking about? I understand none of this. And that's okay with somebody who's thrown into this world of things that's going on. Just like I said in The Matrix, Neo was asking that, like, what the hell is going on? I think The Matrix did a better job of explaining everything. Morpheus, the way that he explained things, he just was so cool about it. And he had these cool references and he and he had these uh just you know like examples. He used Alice in Wonderland. You come down a rabbit hole with me. What if I told you this world wasn't real? Do you want to know the truth or do you want to stay here and just live your life in the best way possible and be ignorant to what's really going on in the world? And this is good guys didn't come get him so to relive his memories. So it's a little different. But I have to say, um, the last 10 minutes of this movie was the most exciting parts for me. Besides what happened in during, um, the late 1500s when he was in the Animus. I, I say that because they were in the real world now. They're out of hysterical industries. Uh, Colin Lynch and his team that he gathered together from the survivors who broke out of hysterical industries. They were on the streets. You've seen cars. You've seen a different setting. They're outside. It's a city. And they sneak into this building to stop the Templars who located the apple of eden from a certain historical figure who us in the united states uh know a lot about you know what i mean but the thing is um that was interesting to me because it was modern day and there were assassins and you saw them you know go on this mission um whenever they traveled in the animus it was always like they're already in the middle of the mission you didn't see the setup you didn't see them get there you just saw them always on the brink of about to attack or defend and um the end of this the last 10 minutes, you, you realize at that moment, all of this was a setup movie. I mean, they're leaving it open so a sequel can happen. And it's this beautiful shot of the three assassins that escaped Astergo just standing there on this building and overlooking the city. And it's it's beautiful. It's fantastic. It's, it's something that you would have saw in the game. And these are three Brotherhood members. Now, I can't wait to see the next film. And I hope we do get another film. The reason why is I realized all of this was a setup film. If it moves a little slow for some people... Just realize this is, they had a lot to explain. If they didn't have to explain anything, and most of the general audience that went to go see this, people who haven't played the games or not big and too familiar with the games, just played some of it. If you didn't have to explain a lot of that to these people, you could have started this movie halfway through where the movie, you know, started and then continue on past the ending into a little bit more of what we're probably going to see in the sequel to this. And I would like to see a sequel as a fan of the video games. This movie wasn't the worst. It wasn't the best. I can see why some people had problems with this movie. But I, I, I wouldn't sit there and say, don't go see this movie. Go see it. You might like it. It has a, a very strange feel. Like I said, it's like somebody's trapped in prison or an insane asylum. So it has that feel to it. If you don't like movies like that, you could get bored with the beginning of this movie. Or the first two-thirds of it. I will be buying this movie once it comes out on Blu-ray. Yes, I will because I'm a fan of the game and I want to see it again. I don't know if I'm going to rush to the movies to see it again. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to take my nephew. I think they did a good job of adapting things from the video game into the movie. You know, the, the best they could, but the script could have been better. Ugh, the writing just was a little off, which made the performances off. If that's how the characters were portrayed on paper... Now, I think the movie did its job if it was a setup movie. It set up things. I guarantee you, if we get a sequel, it's going to be way better. Whether it be from complaints of people who didn't like the movie or people who did like the movie but had complaints, like me, just a few things. I guarantee the second movie will be better. Like the video if you liked the video. Let me know if you saw the movie. What did you think about the movie? Leave some comments down below. Let's discuss this. And as always, share the video and subscribe. I will see you next time.